How are you guys? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Did you? All right. Did you guys vote today? I sure did. That's right. You did. For I those know in America, I... you better have voted. I know Jeffrey did. Because if you didn't vote, you can't complain about anything. If you didn't vote, then you're not allowed to brag on social media about voting. Which I mean, we, we all know is the true crime. I I bragged on social media about voting. I was very proud of it. I went on Saturday to go vote. I did early voting. If I, I, I had told my girlfriend, I, we, I woke up in the morning. I said, take me voting. And she said, yes, please. Uh, How I, romantic. We didn't get stickers at our location. I was super upset. How are we about supposed it? to show off on social media that we vote if we didn't get our stickers? I actually really wanted a sticker specifically. That's the whole reason I came out. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a little thing, but Christy Teigen didn't get a sticker either, and she's upset. <laughs> so it's it's a massive issue. It's it's this a travesty, really. You know who didn't get to vote? Who didn't get to vote? The people of England in Tudor times. They did not, and then they dealt with Henry the Eighth. And that sucked. I like how a lot of just always bitch about, like in the States we bitch about like, oh, it's like we have to deal with this person for the next four, eight years. England had to deal like, crap, we had to deal with this person until they die. Yeah. Pretty much. Can you imagine not, like, not liking Queen Elizabeth at the beginning of her reign? <laughs> I mean, they just left the country when that happened. So, oh, Jesus, that'd be a long time. Yeah. Or like even the queen now. <laughs> Yeah, I know. What's well, who, the name? who could be mad at the queen now? She's not doing well, anything. Well, back when she probably first got in office, like, well, you're related to a Nazi lover. That's true. Wait, what? Well, actually, that didn't, know that? Come, that didn't come out until her reign. Yeah, but can you imagine then, like, having to be Fuck. under her reign? Like, when she could. So, the queen now, her uncle, he was king for, like, how long? A year or two. And then he. Abdicated? He, he advocated the, his reign. Then it went to the current queen's father who was his younger brother if you remember if you don't know the movie the king speech colin nope. colin firth's character no no colin yeah colin yeah firth. colin firth sorry colin firth. then when he died she became queen but then it came out that in the her, 19 her uncle who was king for at one point was a nazi sympathizer and he actually there's pictures of him like in germany like smiling with hitler hanging, with hitler and everything looking at the troops go by jesus oh, yeah yeah Huge deal. So was, I, I, did w- didn't the prince wasn't he caught wearing like Nazi memorabilia or clothing at one point? Uh, prince Harry went to a party back in the mid early two thousands and he had a swastika armband. Like you do. You know he could but, have been dressed up as one of the characters from the producers. Probably like especially a lot of the older generations who were probably seeing seeing that like her uncle. Oh who, my! Was like, yeah, there's a it's like cool. Yeah, but I want to find out when that happened. When well, I remember you, s- I remember watching the scene we in were watching the, the, the crown, crown when that when that got well, that was revealed revealed to her. She was yeah. still younger at the time. It was the fifties. So for a lot of people, because you always think I'm, about that. I'm looking for. Uh, okay. Um, abdicated the throne. Oh, he ruled for less than a year. Uh, became the Duke of Windsor. October 1937, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor visited Hitler at Berchtesgaden. The only reason I know how to say that is because of the producers. (laughs) Um, Hitler began vacationing, blah, blah, blah. Um, Gave Hitler the Nazi salute. Hmm. After the war, American diplomats uncovered 400 tons of German, 400 tons of German diplomatic papers. Holy shit! Um, 400 tons. That's what it says. That's a lot of paper. That's a shit ton. It was on cardstock. <laughs> 1957, it was released that that had happened, and it was released <sighs> by American papers. So, yeah. Uh, uh, pro tip, if you're ever in public office, don't have Nazi shit. Don't don't be friends to Nazis. You would think in 2018 that would be common sense. However. Oh, no. My dear Emily. No, no, no. 
There are a lot of people who need to be told Nazis. Hey, suck. by the way, Nazis bad. <laughs> we were, we, can never learn we, this. We were rewatching the producers, the musical version, but I was even thinking about how the original version was made probably like twenty five years. Was yeah. it in the sixties or something? It was like late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. Was the original with Gene Wilder? Because that was like early. That was like Mel Brooks' first big movie. But you think about like yeah, like that movie like that. That only came out like twenty or so years after World War Two. You think about how many people 30. who would have been still alive who went through that. Yeah, but that. his whole shtick was and making fun of Hitler, so yeah. it was wonderful. Well, I mean, even Mel Brooks himself was in Europe at the time. He was of the Jewish. War. Yeah. Yeah. He was there. He, he doesn't look Jewish. He was his. He was in charge of. <laughs> Finding landmines. Yeah. God, that was bad. I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. Mel Brooks is awesome. Uh, Funny and a hero. Speaking of history and comedy and heroes, do you guys want to talk? It, 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 don't worry. It'll, it'll work out. Uh, do you guys want to <laughs> talk about today's topic? Yeah, absolutely. What do we got? Okay. I decided that because we are we are just past his anniversary... We are going to talk about Henry Tudor the Seventh's coronation. Okay. You guys ready for this? Let's do it. Sure. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I mean, Garrett and Jeff know this, but I thought our listeners would get a kick out of it. Jeff's dad started listening to our podcast. <laughs> and he started <laughs> he listened to like an episode. He started with the most recent episode. And he's like, I'm very confused. It's been four minutes and I haven't heard anything about the Tudors. <laughs> And I was, was I joked, that was that just one of our reviews on iTunes? <laughs> That's why I joked that he said, uh, "Like, well, he can join the rest of our listeners who probably all say the exact same thing." <laughs> um, and it then, takes us a while to get there, okay? And then he <laughs> <laughs> give us about seven hours. <laughs> I was like, maybe skip forward ten minutes or so. <laughs> um, I wish he'd continued with it because he was very amusing while he was listening to it. Anyway. Henry the Seventh's coronation, 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 corn. Oh, wait, that's nation. Indiana. No, it's uh, the it's the people who like corn. We are the corn nation. We're the children of the corn. Oh wait, scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> um, his coronation. So, just a quick recap. Henry the Seventh hopped on over to England, and on August twenty second, kind of took the throne. He took the throne. No, he inherited it. That's this whole thing is he he inherits it's rightfully his throne. I'm curious to hear this because I'm always curious if the coronations actually like stay pretty consistent with the way things are done today. Um, but I'll let you go over into these things. We can kind of do talk about comparisons to other. Now I kind of want to research Elizabeth's coronation. So August 22nd, 1485, Henry the Henry uh, the seventh only then known as Henry Tudor, uh, went to the Battle of Bosworth and was all, um, I'm going to kill you, and <laughs> slayed Richard III. And, and he goes, humpback. I, I am I am the king now. <laughs> um, but he still needed a coronation. Simply taking the crown wasn't quite enough. It's it helped. Not, it's not official until you make a whole ceremony out of it. I mean, that's It's just what, like today with Facebook. It's not official if you don't make a big deal about it on social media. Oh, man. Facebook would have had to add a life event becomes king. <laughs> um, interestingly, Henry declared that his reign started on August 21st, the day before the battle. That way he was able to take the lands and the goods of all the nobles who fought on Richard III's side. So sneaky little bastard. Um, but also remember that he hadn't been in England since he was a child. So not many people really knew who he was and he had a lot to prove after winning the battle because they're like, okay, this guy says he's an inheritor. The king has come back. Who are you? <laughs> Pretty much. You um, don't have a home back. <laughs> so he held Henry's New Year's rockin' coronation. That was a really bad joke. Well, he must be a king. All right. Why? We found the title. <laughs> <laughs> He must be a king. Why do you say that? He ain't got shit all over him. Pretty much. Well, I mean, yeah. So his coronation, he decided on uh, the date October 30th, 1485. So we just missed the anniversary of that. Mm -hmm. Happy anniversary. And, and we just did a spooky episode instead. We did. 
Um, Henry the seventh was crowned King of England and I and I'm sorry, King of England and France, Lord of Ireland, and Prince of Wales. Um, because remember, Henry the eighth was like, I decided I'm g- the King of Ireland now. That's just, mine now. I like that country. It's mine. <laughs> um. So we mentioned recently, and I can't remember which episode or why it was brought up, but Henry wanted to be crowned before the next parliament sat. Um, and that was specifically because he didn't want them saying, we've given you this. <laughs> he wanted to be like, no, no, I earned it. Um, and parliament was due to start November 7th. So he was like, fuck that noise. I'm going to beat you by a week. Um and he also waited to marry Elizabeth of York because he didn't want um he didn't want people being like well he's only he's only the king because he married the heir of Edward and so he was just very all about projecting that he was king <laughs> didn't matter what anybody look said look at me look at me yeah i, I am your king <laughs> yeah uh henry so henry was pretty still pretty youngish he was about 28 when this happened so not really that old I guess kind of in those times, oldish, but um, it was. Don't tell me twenty eight's old. I'm already freaking out about that. (laughs) No, it's not old for us because we live. Our average life range is like the eighties now. That's true. For them, oh god, I don't want to live till I'm eighty. What did you say? I said I don't want to live till I'm eighty. Is that too long? Oh man, I'm 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 not in shape to live till eighty and be comfortable. (laughs) Yeah, but Garrett, it's always the people who are drinking every day and smoking cigarettes and eating red meat that are like... Garrett has a death plan. I'm 95 <laughs> years old. I smoke for 15 years, and I eat red meat like crazy. Well, I, I you know, these, these are the changes. Red meat's delicious. Everybody eat a it steak. Is. I can never stop. Don't, 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 don't stop the meat. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so... His coronation was the first time he was reunited with his mother, Margaret Beaufort, for the first time in 14 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she was reported to have wept marvelously, (laughs) which I can totally believe. I mean, she's so good at crying. She's really good at crying, but she's a marvelous crier. (laughs) (laughs) I visualize the people who are like the ones who are documenting, reporting those, like the ones who are like taking notes of what happened at those places are like just the e news today. Oh, my God, you're right. The red carpet coverage. Oh, my God, you're right. <laughs> that one, really one of those Joan Rivers with a... Margie, Margie Beaufort, who are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, So, although he's kind of... He was remembered as, like, being a cheap ass. I know we talked about this before. He wasn't really. He spent a lot of money on the coronation to kind of impress everybody. He wanted... All the people who lived in England to be like, yeah, he totally is our king. Look, when, at- you, when you're not in your country for so long, you really got to make yourself an entrance. Problem with money. Um, so the coronation itself, the whole ceremony started October 27th. He had dinner at Lambeth Palace with the Archbishop of Canterbury. Um, and that same Archbishop had actually crowned Edward the, hold on. Edward the fourth and Richard the third. So that guy had lived through some shit. I'm flipping my notes. There we go. Um, then traditionally the monarchs would stay in the tower of London before their coronation. So this applied to Kings and then also like their consorts. Mm -hmm. So it's where Anne Boleyn stayed. It's where Catherine of Aragon stayed. Um, and veritable who's who. Yeah. Um, but remember, it was a beautiful palace at that time. Not quite the terror, the terror uh, prison it became under mm-hmm. Henry the Eighth. Mm-hmm. It's a, uh, it's like a community hall. It has multiple pur- purposes. It is. Yeah, you can rent it out for your weddings, your bat mitzvahs, your enslavement of people like nephews, your beheadings. Yeah, you know, typical things. Yeah, just like all you have to do is apply. So it's just like pay a down it, payment. It just has one of the signs in the front, like this week in, um, <laughs> imprisonment of my niece. <laughs> Next, Next week, week, bingo. Next week, bingo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So then the next day on the twenty eighth, he did a lot of a, a lot of ennobling. He he gave people royal or he gave people titles. He ennobled his uncle Jasper Tudor as the Duke of Bedford, and Thomas Stanley and Edward Courtenay were given earldoms. 
Um, then Reginald Bray, Edward Stafford, John Fitzwalter, Thomas Kokesgi. <laughs> Don't worry, people will mm-hmm. correct us on that one too. Well, it was spelled C O K E, Coke, S G E. So I'm going with Kokesgi. 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 Uh, Roger. Sounds like a Polish name. Roger. <laughs> Roger. L- let's ask our Polish friends. Um, um, sounds like a Polish name. <laughs> uh, Roger Lukanor, Henry Hayden, and John Verney. They were all appointed Knights of the Bath. Reminder, they bathed when they became Knights of the Bath. Together? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and then October Scrubs 29th, looking. the next day, there was a procession of the king and of those he'd just ennobled the day before to Westminster Hall. They kind of travel back to fo- back and forth from Westminster Hall to the tower a fucking lot. Like, it, the, every day they would go from one to the other. It's just this little horde of men just going or yeah. <laughs> back and forth. Yeah, it was kind of like checkers. You try and get across the board and back. Um, along the procession route, they had a bunch of pageants and plays, and the crowds would gather to celebrate. Um and let's see on october 29th no wait that's i'm already there so we have reports of what henry wore so joan joan rivers (laughs) would you like to take it away oh yes darling uh henry those those little those little rough i mean later years later years (laughs) yeah Uh, Henry did not wear a hat or a crown. I don't know why they had to specifically say his head had nothing on it. Because he's going to put something on it later, obviously. If you like it, then you should have put a crown on it. Um, he's going for a he's going for a bold, crownless look. <laughs> I love it. He had a long purple velvet gown edged with ermine, and uh, oh, the canopy was carried over his head by four knights. <laughs> which, if I were rich. I'd totally pay somebody to carry a canopy over me because I burn so easily. Like. Was he a redhead too? Yeah. So. No. Or no. He got his red hair from his mother's side of the family. That's why I thought. He got it from Edward the Fourth, who was tall. So, and man, I feel like, I feel like there's just too much pageantry. <laughs> Um, so in front of him, some of the nobles... <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I, I feel like, I feel like if you're royalty back then, you want to try and appeal to the hearts and minds of the people. So you'd be like, hey, look, I don't need someone holding canopies over my no, head. No, but if you think about it, the Civil War, they just ended this horrible Civil War, and, um, he kind of needed to show the people that he was rightfully the king because he knew that they could revolt. That's true. You he really was, lead, need to let them know that he is in charge now. Yeah. I mean, you can just solve that by a f- couple beheadings. <laughs> I mean, he tried that. Henry VIII did that. Henry VIII did that, yeah. <laughs> That's what becomes known as tyranny. Yay. Can everyone say tyranny? T- um, so in front of Henry, he had some of those nobles, including Thomas Stanley, who is his stepfather, and John de la Pole. And the mayor of London, they all rode in front of him. And then behind him, they were, there were uh, the Dukes of Suffolk and Bedford, which, fun fact, they were the only two Dukes in the kingdom at that point. Um, and he also had a new, hmm, Pursuivant, Pursuivant. Do you guys want the English pronunciation or the French pronunciation? We oui. the French. Pursuivant. That's what I'm going with. Poe mm. agrees that he wants the French pronunciation. And um, it's called the, the Rouge Dragon to show his Welsh heritage. So I Googled what a pursuivant is, and it kind of looks like it's the guy with the trumpet who announces his entering. <laughs> yeah. Lord and Lady Douchebag. Lord and Lady Gaga. <laughs> um, and then finally, his actual coronation day. Oh, finally we get there. Finally. October 30th. He left the Tower of London because he went back there. And he was with the highest lords of the land and the bishops and nobles. So all the cool dukes and, and, and the bishops, all the, the, the heads of the church. Mm-hmm. Um, they all marched through London to Westminster. 
back to Westminster. There were lots of trumpeters, probably a ska band or two. <laughs> like I think, I think. Uh, Real big fish in my my boss tones did the opening for the ceremony. So yeah, that out. guy, he was dancing. <laughs> sell out with me, oh yeah, sell out with me tonight. And then later at the party, they play. They played. Um, oh my god, the beer. Uh, the beer song. The beer song. There we go. Everybody yeah. knows what that is. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they yeah. s- so they also had some uh, heralds, squires, and attendants hanging out with them. And there were lots of formal protocols. Unfortunately, we didn't get many details about that. But we did once again find out what Henry wore. <laughs> Henry wore a velvet jacket with black and ermine fur. A long gown made from crimson cloth of gold. Other robes of crimson velvet and satin, a doublet of black satin, and a doublet of cloth of gold. So he either had as many wardrobe changes as Lady Gaga, or he was very bulky. He just kind of waddled to his yeah. coronation. Yeah. I can't put my arms down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he also paid a lot of money for all of these clothes. London's goldsmiths, their embroiderers, their cloth merchants. All of them got a lot of money from it. But then all, Henry also spent a lot of money on cushions, wall hangings, <laughs> curtains. Cushions? Cushions. Uh, curtains. Just some throw pillows. A couple of, couple of lights. That That's how I, no, no joke, that's how I measure somebody's like status and wealth. Because I can't afford to just have extra pillows lying around. All the pillows that I have, I need to use those pillows. Oh, but if you have throw if you have throw pillows and you've got money, I feel like my house is around. just pure throw pillow. <laughs> but we actually use all our pillows. We do make sweet pillow forts. We do. <laughs> Everybody needs to build a th- pillow fort. If you're too cool for pillow forts, stop listening to my podcast. <laughs> um, fun fact, fun story. When my eldest nephew was three, he was at my parents' house and he we were playing in the basement, and he wanted to build a fort, so we built a fort together. And then I'm like. What do you think we should name the fort? And he goes, mm, I don't know. What do you think? And I'm like, Fort Kickass. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, didn't go too well with the five year old. Three. Yeah. He wasn't that impressed with the name, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Dang kids, don't have a sense of humor. Um, so then they finally arrived at Westminster, <laughs> and his uncle Jasper Tudor. How many days later? Uh, several days later. <laughs> uh, Jasper Tudor, his reliable and very loyal uncle, carried Henry's crown through the abbey, which is pretty cool. Um, and a bunch of other people who'd been loyal to Henry and the Tudor cause were given some sort of role in the coronation. At the actual, uh, in the abbey, Henry sat upon a throne that was covered in cloth of gold. And he was presented by the Archbishop of Canterbury. The ceremony was performed by the Bishop of Durham and the Bishop of Bishop of Bath and, well, and Wells, as well as the Bishops of Exeter and Ely. Um, but because the Archbishop was the head of the church in England, uh, he was the one who got to anoint and place the crown on Henry's head. So what do each of them even really do? They like just give like a small speech and like... They bishop. So they protect the king? What is it a butler does? <laughs> he buttles. <laughs> Um, a, a bishop. It's more of a roast. <laughs> uh, I feel like such a bad Catholic for not knowing. Jeff Ross is there. <laughs> Garrett, how would you describe what a bishop does? <clears throat> um, if I'm if I remember correctly, a bishop is the one in charge of a of a group of churches, like a diocese, right? Yeah. Okay, that's and he's he's just kind of like the head priest. So like when there's like a super special mass, then that's what he's in charge right. of. Right. So these bishops collectively ha- did the mass because everything mm-hmm. was church based back then. Um, okay. Bef- before Henry the Eighth. Um, Seems excessive, but okay. Uh, well, I mean, so far that's been the definition of this whole ceremony. Seems <laughs> <laughs> seems <Right>? excessive. <laughs> um, so he placed the crown on his We're head. We're so modest. <laughs> He placed the crown on his head and said, Sirs, here is present Henry, rightful and undoubted inherito by the laws of God and man to the crown and royal dignity of England. Okay, wait, there, there's literally no punctuation in this, so I'm going to do it just like that. Sirs, here is present Henry, rightful and undoubted and 
undoubted inherito by the laws of God and man to the crown and royal dignity of England with all things thereunto annexed and appertaining elect chosen and required by th- by all three estates of this same land to take upon himself this said crown and royal dignity. <laughs> it's like those like end oh. of a of like a me- medical commercial. I felt like it. Um, so basically, side effects may include then basically <laughs> Tyr- tyranny, <laughs> asshole son, <laughs> rain, rain of megalomania. Yeah. <laughs> um, then basically the bar- bishop said, uh, "Speak now, or forever hold your peace." Anybody opposed? Everybody was like, "Yay, Henry!" Is that one guy in the background? I do. Kill that man. <laughs> I mean, really, who the hell would say, you know? Should he really be king, though? Should he? Let's have a discussion. Um, they were pro- they were all sick of Civil War, too. Civil War is fucking expensive. We don't care who wins. Just give us a fucking king. <laughs> right? Civil War is expensive, guys. Um, so Henry was led to the high altar and asked if he would grant and keep the laws and customs of England. Henry was like, yep, totes. And then he was asked if he would protect the interests of the church and be just in all of his actions. And Henry said, absolutely. And that totally got me thinking about Henry VIII's coordination because he was probably asked the same question. And do you think he, he, like, the camera. he like crossed his fingers? <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah, totally. You know, I want to imagine like... <laughs> Like the tutors, but it's done like House of Cards, where like Henry just turns to the camera every once in a while. Oh fuck, that'd be great. He has a southern accent for some reason. <laughs> I only I only beheaded my wife for the power. <laughs> 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 All right, let's make an episode where we like do it like House of Cards. House of Roses. Oh fuck, oh guys! Oh my god, Jeff, you're a fucking genius. Actually, I kind of want to do that. That can we? That should be a really That's great like Photoshop. Can no, I don't. Even, I don't want to Photoshop it. I actually want to write a script, and Garrett can do the Henry the Eighth voice, <laughs> and you can be one of the advisors, probably Cromwell, <laughs> and I'll be well, one of the wives. When he's not doing the asides, he's talking in a normal like uh, English accent. <laughs> oh my God! When yeah. He turns, when he does his little like uh, soliloquy. Yes. Southern. Yeah. I think we should actually do this. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean. I'll invest in the time. <laughs> I think we should pull in Bruce to write the script <laughs> because I'm not a good script writer. <laughs> this is happening. You guys have no choice. We're going to make that. Or we just take a script from House of Cards and just change all the proper nouns. That's true. <laughs> how are we going to do it? That's going to be one of the upcoming episodes, guys, I swear. Um, so finally, Henry was anointed with the holy oil in the middle of his back, his shoulders, his elbows, and his head. Don't know why those specific spots, but... Uh, his neck, his back. Neck. His, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a comeback what, story. What, what spots did you say again? His The middle of his back, his shoulders, his elbows, and his head. It just sounds like they were giving him a massage. <laughs> oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> they got the... He's just getting a back rub from the bishop. <laughs> they get, well, the, the Knights of Bath get a bath, and Henry gets a nice massage. They all bathe with each other and rub each other with oils. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's um, what Beth is. <laughs> and then, then the crown was finally placed on his head by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Eventually we got to the crown. Yes. So then they had mass and Henry went back to the Tower of London. Oh my God, you people in your masses. I know. And uh, how, they, how much stuff can you talk about? I mean, that's I mean, that's like in a typical Catholic mass. That's like halfway through the day. <laughs> yeah. Oh I mean, God, I'm, all you're kneeling I'm baffled. And standing and kneeling again. I'm baffled at the concept of going to mass multiple times a day like they used to. Like, how do you have oh the time God. for that? And it used to be all in well, Latin. else to do? And longer. <laughs> well, in Catholic school, we had to go at least. Back when I went to Catholic school, I went at least three times a week. Once for because they had you know all the individual like they had like second and third graders all go to mass on Tuesdays and like fourth and fifth graders go on like Wednesdays yeah. and blah blah blah. The whole school went to Mass on Fridays, and then I would go to Mass on Sundays. That's fucking excessive. It's just like, uh, how do you not? I was raised Methodist, and we kind of went when we felt like it. <laughs> I, I just, going to Mass that often, I feel like w- the Bible's not that big. Like, Lord and, of the... And by the, by the way, if, if, 
you, our listeners, go to mass. We're we're not trying to like make fun of you. No, or, like, we went through this too. This. I, it's just crazy how much I, I think it's crazy how much you have to go to mass in in, in a Catholic setting. I yeah, because there's, I mean, even for people who didn't go to Catholic school, like I was raised Catholic, so I went every Sunday without fail. Mm-hmm. And then you also mm-hmm. had the holy days of obligation. So, God, Easter week you were just at at church like. Bring a sleeping bag. My my, mm-hmm. my family was were hev- heavy creasters. We just did pretty much Christmas and Easter sermons. Mm. Um, when I was young, we we went to a fairly modern church. Like it was held at was a local theater. Like the owner of this theater was part of the church, and it was like a, it was just pretty much like a it was normally during the day t- during the evening a dinner theater place, and so like their tables already set up. So we all sit there, and that's where they hold the mass. They have a, a a live band play music and they showed like movies and TV show clips relating to a theme of the day. See, th- that's what I had. I remember you telling me something about like you guys would be eating donuts or something. Yeah. They, in the middle they serve donuts and juice there while, while, while mass was We are happening. literally not, not allowed to eat sermon. an hour before mass. See, we didn't. Oh, come well, on. Well, see the whole communion thing wasn't a thing at all. With see, that's baffling to me because yeah, like to me, Church is for communion. Now, now, like, we would do occasional, like, on special occasions, we would do a form of, we do, like, we have a bread that they would be right, served guys, to us. The and then we wouldn't do the wine. It'd be just, like, a grape, a, juice. A grape juice, essentially, that would be served to everyone. No, so, dude. like, we would do it with special occasions, but it was never, like, every week you had to take communion. No, dude. My, si- thing is, my first sip of wine was second grade. I don't even remember it being grade. called communion. I just remember, like, oh, we're just... I don't think it's called communion in any other. Is it? It was never. It's it was the never, Eucharist and I can't Catholicism. Remember, I, don't, I don't remember them calling anything. I just remember that was just a ceremony. Like I remember being Time a kid. The, bread. Like, I, the thing is, as a kid, I, I was told to to dip the bread in the juice, and I didn't like it. It seemed. You dipped the body of Christ into grape juice. <laughs> I mean, body oh, and wow. blood. It kind of goes together. But Jesus separated them for a reason. <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> like. I, I've known people that have done Crystal in your mouth and take it down with a swig of wine. Methodist. There are no rules. There are guidelines. I know. It's just... <laughs> no, no, Emily, I, I've known people in Catholic Mass who have done that. Dip like the wafers in the but, wine? Yeah. I mean... Like... Uh, I think it just depends on your church. Some it must, are, because every church I've been to, there are two separate lines for wine and bread. So, like, what, do you hold on to your bread until you get to the wine line? Mm. yeah but but the wine is like put to our lips like we don't i mean we can take the cup but it's like <laughs> there's not really an opportunity to d- to do any bread dipping well see i swear i've seen that so happen. like with us we get like l- like the little plastic like cups like think like a plastic oh. shot glass with grape juice and that's what they gave they pass out to each of us and we hold it and all go back to our seat and then we all would do it together this is mind-blowing were you guys wearing like track suits and like matching sneakers? <laughs> well, so, <laughs> so, so they all had matching Nike socks on. So, so the thing or is Nike shoes. that that when I did that was that was when I was a young kid. That's when we were still going to the main traditional church. Traditional. Well, no, it was traditional it was, no, for you. Well, no, it was no, still like church. an actual chapel with a giant. Like it was actually made for church with, the um, right and everything that and the person who would do the presentation was, was in robes. It wasn't until I got into like maybe like fifth or fourth grade that's when we started going to like it was like a sister branch of that church of what i went to was the more modern kind of style with donuts and like yeah i I would wear pretty much a t-shirt and jeans and tennis shoes too shit we weren't a lot i mean it's different now my siblings can wear jeans and whatever our logic was was, it's not it was dressed up for jesus yeah the thing is for us it was like i mean we could worship him in any way it was comfortable to us as long as we're, ex- see, I prefer that. Yeah, it's like I, I do and, too. Well, because thing is, also we weren't with Methus. We, with us, it wasn't about the guilt and, fi- and the fire and brimstone. Like, oh, you're gonna all, yeah. you're all going to hell for your sins. It was like, just love each other, be nice to each other. Yeah, like Jesus wanted everyone to be nice, and that's all like we're trying to do. I, I agree. <laughs> that's I, how I prefer I was, that. That's and how I, don't I think, was taught. I don't church. think every Catholic mm-hmm. church is fire and brimstone. I've definitely intended one that is painfully and, fire and brimstone and there's often, very old testament and there's like it was my pastor who um she oftentimes wouldn't even like she wouldn't take things too literal the bible she would kind of explain like 
here's kind of how he was trying to explain it. Like, like whenever Jesus would use his stories, like rather than giving like direct answers on how See, I think that's he the tells, difference. Is Catholics are like the, they take they it all teach literal. Their Bible very literally. Yeah. See, I. Okay, this is, I, I may have mentioned this before, but I distinctly remember talking to my priest back when I was in Catholic school and asking him about the story of Adam and Eve, and he explained to me that that is just a story. That is not that is not actually real, but it's a story. Huh. Man, wow. you must have had a very cool, like, my, so I, it's, it's the church that they went to, and I, I did not like that church because it was very literal, very fire and brimstone. My sister was teaching a Sunday school class and they were talking about heaven because they're like little first and second graders curious about heaven. And apparently one of the priests got up and I guess he was a guest priest for like a year. And he was like, a lot of people think heaven is where you, when you die, you go and see your loved ones, but it's not. Nobody (laughs) else is there but Jesus. But you love Jesus so much that you don't care that nobody else is there. I'm like, Holy shit, if I was a first grader and somebody told me that, I would be crying. Right? It's just like some of it is so intense. And I guess it's the intense churches that are more well known. It, that's the thing is it's so inconsistent amongst different like you can hear have Catholic churches that are I mean all that's why they try and change things. the rules of, like back like ten years ago when yeah. they're like like uh, you can say it's like trying to say like oh I'm part of the Catholic church and people will instantly have that in- instant some people think of the old traditional like fire brimstone everything you do is you're going to go to hell but you know the other ones are like i mean it's not that bad guys it's like seriously well i mean look at the pope look at the pope now versus the last pope versus the pope before that it's like Mm -hmm. so we got off topic but i think it was a good conversation oh no it's kind of relation yeah um i mean we're almost done henry rode or henry went back to the tower of london oh my god that tower and jasper rode ahead of him Apparently, he was all decked out, and even his horse had fur. <laughs> um, after the first course, they had a traditional thing where a champion, in this case, it was Sir Robert Dinmuck. And they would he ri- wanted to go on to do great stuff. <laughs> they would ride through the hall and on a horse and issue a challenge saying, anybody, does anybody here challenge the king's authority? And nobody, nobody sitting down in a flat, in a stone hall at small tables... When a man comes through on a fucking horse is going to say, yeah, I do. So uh, there was a little bit of a cool Wakanda moment that happened there. <laughs> um, but nobody nobody challenged him and everybody was happy. And Henry VII w- went on to be the most well-known Tudor king. And his son didn't do anything terrible or tragic. Yeah, Arthur was all right. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Henry VII's coronation. So... Is the so this is what I kind of was thinking began this. Are coronations just kind of decided upon by the person being coronated of how they'll be handled? No, there's tradition. I mean, I'm sure there's some tradition, but like here, I feel like there's a lot of stuff probably Henry added to it. Only I in the pageants, like only only the pageants and the the things like but that. But what comes the actual part anything. where the crowning and all that stuff? The, yeah, everything that happens in the church would have been standard. Like, he even had the same crown as Edward IV and Richard III. I don't know if this is a dumb question or not. Is this still the original crown that's used today, or has it been updated since? It's been updated since. Because the current crown, I always forget what it's called. The one that's in the tower on display that you can see, the, the famous crown. that With the red. What's it called? I don't know. It, it has a name. I just can never remember. It's where the crown is used today. Um, the, the Tudor crown... Was used by monarchs um, from Henry VIII up until the English Civil War in 1649. Let me check out current royal crown of England. I swear it had a name. It does. Mm. St. Edward's crown. St. Edward's crown? St. Edward's crown. I thought it had a different one. Unless I'm thinking of something else. I don't know. I don't know. Because, like, the current crown wouldn't... Because that's like you're always kind of curious because they use these different crowns for ceremonies, but are they? Is it constantly changing, or is this something that's been? This one's been around since I th- whoever. I think they've been around for a long time, but not necessarily forever. Well, now do they? So when it comes to that kind of stuff, like the crown, is that something? 
chosen by whoever's going to be wearing it or is it going to be something that's like no it's pretty some, standard it's i think something it's pretty that's standard. already existing because like that's why right. i was curious about was when they decide when's when are we going to no longer use this crown for the future okay here's some information the centerpiece of the coronation regalia is named after edward the confessor saint edward's crown and is placed on the monarch's head at the moment of crowning by the archbishop of canterbury made of gold and completed in 1661 St. Edward's crown has two depressed arches on top. It's embellished with 444 stones, including amethysts, garnets, peridots, rubies, sapphires, topazes, tourmalines, and zircons. The crown was fashioned to closely resemble the medieval one with a heavy gold base and clusters of semi-precious stone, but the arches are decidedly Baroque. In the late 20th century, it was assumed to be original, as their weight is almost identical, and an invoice produced in 1661 for the addition of gold to, to an existing crown. In 2008, research found that a coronation crown had been made in 1660, and it was enhanced when Parliament increased the budget for Charles II's delayed coronation. Um, after 1689, Barnarchs chose to be crowned with a lighter, bespoke coronation crown, that of George IV., or their state crown, while St. Edward's crown usually rested on the high altar. The tradition of using St. Edward's crown was revived in 1911 for the coronation of George V. Elizabeth II opted to use a stylish, stylized image of this crown on coat of arms, badges, logos, blah, 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 blah. It replaced the image of the Tudor-style crown adopted in 1901 by Edward VII. Whew. I, I, fear, I don't really remember what the... The crown jewels is what they're always called. I, that's what. Oh, that's a collection. That's a collection. I'm actually looking at that now. So, like, this is me looking at Wikipedia. So, I'm sorry, people, if this is not. 100%. That's what I'm on. But I'm looking at this where the oldest piece still in use is a coronation spoon, and that's from the 12th century. Holy fuck! But then the newest piece Ooh. added was added by Elizabeth II. And it looks like it's an R R Mills, A R M I L L S. Hmm. It's uh, that this that was add, but she added that to the collection in 1953. Cool. But like, yeah, it's it's so the crown jewels is what I was thinking. I thought the crown jewels was what they call the crown itself. Oh no, sorry. But yeah, so I'm looking at a picture. It shows the Saint Edward's crown, the orb, and the sovereign scepter and ring. I see a picture of that. So I think it looks like they're is crowns. It, is there any pictures of the Tudor crown that was used from his coronation or anything like that? Mm. Cause I'm, and if like you're kind of curious what happened to those pieces that was used for that original coronation Henry the seventh coronation crown i think well no Tudor, okay so that's the Tudor crown mm-hmm. and that was henry the eighth's crown um it was the imperial and state crown used by monarchs of England and Great Britain from Henry VIII up to 1649. Um, fate. After the death of Elizabeth I and the end of the Tudor dynasty, the Stuarts came to power. James and Charles both wore the crown. After the abolition, abolition of the monarchy and execution of 1649, the Tudor crown was broken up. Oh, oh God. And its valuable components sold for 1,100 pounds. Oh, my God. So they actually took it apart and sold it off for pieces? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's Because <laughs> the thing is, nowadays... That breaks you, my historical heart. Yeah, nowadays you think of stuff like that as a historical significant piece that, like, okay, fine, if we if we kind of retire a piece of the crown jewels, like, say, we get we decided to use a new crown for the new newer king or queen, we'll keep the old ones more for historical sake, like, display, like, in somewhere for purpose in the future like just somewhere for i mean i don't think they really cared about that kind but of back stuff. then they probably didn't think about that yeah um the current imperial state crown was made in 1937 for george the sixth and it's a copy of one made for queen victoria which had fallen into a poor state of repair hmm. um it used a lot of the same gems from the state crown of george the first it was resized for Elizabeth II. See, that's why I was thinking about that Jesus. too. Jesus. That's why I was partly thinking about that too, was that this crown is not exactly going to be universally sized to people. I, vag- I visualize them like either having to pad things or oh, it's just going to be this that's crown cool. that's going to be too small for the head that just sits right, like, right on top of their All right, head. Here's something cool. The 170 carat black prince's ruby set in the front cross is a large spinel 
I think I said that right, given to Edward the Black Prince by a Spanish king in 1367 and worn by Henry V at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. Hmm. Fuck, that's cool. So the funny thing is, listen to this, when when you're you're describing the ceremony, (laughs) what sadly went to my mind was the coronation scene in Frozen when Elsa is... I don't remember that. Because she has to do the same way. They put the, the, the tiara crown on her head. She has to wear a she'll, she'll hold a scepter and like an orb in one hand. She's all nervous because she's afraid that her her powers her ice powers will like show and like freeze yeah. all the objects. And you could, But like when well, I've seen the pictures of what the crown jewels look like, they show the picture of the scepter and the orb. Kind of made me think of the same kind of way. Like she's given all these objects. She's decorated with them. And she's like presenting them as like when she's finally all crowned. And yeah. pretty much like... Here you see your queen or king majesty now per- for like yeah in front of you now <laughs> whatever it's, it's interesting thanks for asking about the crowns that was I'm glad I looked that up I mean it's just kind of one of those things you always are curious about because yeah. things like this there's so much especially with like England when there's just so much history about its rulers I think one of the things that devastates me the most about history is how much lost history there is like the library of Alexandria yeah guts me I mean it's it's that's what it's always amazing today of like just how much everything today is documented I know like the with the help of everyone being on social media with phones with taking pictures of everything can, like can you just imagine cause it's, it's fun going back and look, tweets being used well it's like you go back and you can see pictures of Seeing like your parents' pictures. I love seeing But those. it's like trying to see your grandparents' photos from like You might get like back. a handful. And yeah, because it wasn't a compliment. But now like some kids are going to be able to see thousands of pictures of their grandparents. Grandma, I found, I found your nudie pics that you sent grandpa when you were dating. Those were the days. Uh, grandpa's dick pic, that one grandma over. <laughs> When That's he, the episode title. When he slid into Grandpa's my DMs. Dick pic. <laughs> Grandpa's dick pic. Ew. Anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, that wraps it up for me. Yeah. Any other me. questions? You just that. I don't know. That's why I, I think about with that with the taking pictures because you talk about things like Amblin, how there's like barely anything to know what she really looked like back then. Yeah. And you're like, God, today like there'd be there'd be millions of photos of her everywhere from everything from from. I think one of the things now. that bothers me the most is that the pic- the the paintings from the 1500s versus a hundred years later, such a drastic difference, <laughs> and it's like, ugh. I think it's like the one thing I'm always most fascinated. It's just like I would love to see how this person actually did look like in person, not just an interpret interpretation of the painting or a, just or a bust or like a statue. Because you think like. Mo- for like Roman times, your best interpretation of like the different Caesars is the bust that are, that mm-hmm. are like sculpted. Like uh-huh. those are probably fairly accurate, but you're like, God, it's crazy thinking about what that person must have looked like back then. Yep, that's that's my heaven. Jesus can be there too, but I I want to see what all the tutors looked like. I'm I'm just insanely curious. Oh yeah, especially you want to see them actually in motion and talking, and you want to hear their voice. That's another thing about a lot of these is because not there's you think about you would not be able to actually hear most of these historical people until what twenties maybe. Mm, when was like, I'm trying to think when radio yeah. when radio was a thing like for actual like public speaking. Yeah, Can you think about like the, the first televised debate wasn't until Kennedy and Nixon. Jesus. Like that was the first time that these politicians had to have a face for Nixon's for screen. Like, I'd only one earlier. I wouldn't Haru. have had Watergate. Haru. Haru. <laughs> oh my dog, Chuckers. Bark, bark. Shut up, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we are an amusing bunch. No, all right. We think so. That's why we keep but this up. That's everything. I I don't have any other questions. No, that's all. I'm done. Yeah, I've got nothing. I got nothing. All right. Thanks, guys. All, All right. right. Bye. Cool. Bye. <laughs> um, where do they find us, Emily? They find us on Twitter and on Facebook. Twitter handle is at Tutor Know Her. Facebook is just Tutor I Hardly Know Her. Mm. Got a couple of episode suggestions from our listeners recently. Message so us with questions really and comments. We got a lot of people to tell us how to pronounce words. Yes, thank you. We now know uh, it is 
Samhain. Samhain is how you say Samhain. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who told us. We appreciate it. Um, Samhain. Samhain, I think. Yep. So good job, guys. Def- definitely not like like it's spelled. No, not at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, find us, follow us, comment on us, tell, rate and review us, give us ideas, talk to us. If you just want to yeah, like, just also, if you feel like getting if you nerdy. Yet, check out the other podcast that I've been showing up on, Strange Heartland. It's a podcast done by a coworker of mine where he interviews people about their paranormal uh, experiences, and it's pretty good. Um, the most recent episode, I haven't listened to it. Shameless the, plug. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm okay with <laughs> this. It's a good, it's a good no, podcast. I'm it's it's a good one. If you guys, it's not history. But if you guys like uh, spooky, scary stories. But if you do like history, the, what are some other good podcasts to listen to, Emily? I would, the, If you want other history podcasts, then my favorites include Queen's Podcast. And let me go through my shows. Okay. Uh, biography. Um, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. It is long and in-depth, but freaking awesome. Um, the two, no, the Queens of England podcast, the Renaissance English history podcast. I found one called revolutions and that's a really cool podcast. Each season goes through a different revolution. Um, and then the British history podcast, it starts like, fuck, like it's on episode almost 300. (laughs) And I think they just got to the death of Alfred. So and here we nope, are. There's just, nope. King Edward died. And here we are just at episode 80 now. Yeah. So uh, go listen to the other podcasts. They're funny and great. Yeah. Support our delightful. fellow podcasters. Cause we're yeah. all in here for the same thing for fun. Yeah. We're all just, we all just love history. Uh, so until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Divorce, Divorce beheaded, beheaded died. died. Divorce, Divorce beheaded, beheaded survived. survived. Goodbye. Goodbye.